All right. So thanks. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for joining us for uh, today at this uh, CI Compass webinar regarding the CI Compass Student Fellowship Program. I'm Angela Marlow, one of the co-directors of the CI Compass Fellowship Program. And this webinar will be presented by myself, uh, Eric Scott, who leads the technical training program, and perhaps Yark Nabrowski, who is also a co-director of the fellowship program. Uh, so next slide, please. Our agenda today includes a brief overview of CI Compass, a summary of the CI Compass Fellowship Program, the structures and goals, uh, details of the technical and research training program, a description of our first year, uh, our future vision for the program, and ways of, for which uh, you could get involved with our student program. Uh, this presentation portion of the webinar it will be fairly short and brief to provide plenty of time for discussion and questions at the end of the presentation. So next slide, please. So many of you already know us. We are CI Compass, a NSF Center of Excellence that provides expertise and support uh, for two CI uh, practitioners at NSF major facilities. Our activities include engagements where we work directly with MFs on, CI, on specific CI concerns. We also have topical working groups where we explore specific topics uh, relevant to major facilities and CI such as cloud and fair data. We conduct workshops related to CI for MFs and other related topics. And we also provide webinars such as this one. And one of our major activities is our student program, which is the topic for today's webinar. Next slide, please. So the CI Compass Fellowship Program or CICF is entering into its second year of the program. Uh, the purpose of the CICF is to broaden student participation in CI research, development, deployment, and operations. Through our program, undergraduate students learn about CI development in major facilities. They develop CI-related skill sets important to the work of major facilities and engage with CI Compass and MF personnel through a virtual research and training program. Our hope is that through this program, we can get undergraduate students excited by potential opportunities in cyber infrastructure and learn about the scientific impact of major facilities. Next slide, please. So the, uh, the CICF program consists of three components. There is a spring technical training program, which provides students experience in technical skills relevant to CI. There is a spring research training program, which provides students experience researching the data life cycles of major facilities. And this helps students understand the importance and context of major facilities and the related data and cyber infrastructure at major facilities. And lastly, there is an optional summer program, which is intended to provide students with a hands-on project-based learning experience at either NMF or with uh, CI Compass team members. And now I'll turn it over to Eric Scott, who is the lead for the technical training program. Thank you. So we have two elements of uh, training in the spring for the undergraduate students, and I'm teaching the technical track of it, um, which is a um, a synchronous uh, video conference Zoom kind of class, uh, one session a week, and then one session is recorded. So um, a, a mix of those two, so they have some review opportunities. We've got uh, a very wide range of students that have applied and that will probably be in the program in backgrounds like computer science and physics and, um, well, you know, all over the, all over the spectrum. Uh, scientifically leaning, but um, no, it's not just computer science students. Um, because of that, we've got to have some breadth in what we expose the students to. Um, the uh, the major facilities, as as you all 
uh, know from living it every day. It's um, a very uh, soup to nuts kind of problem. You, you've got the entire spectrum of computer science, physics, all kinds of things represented in one facility. So um, we need to get the students introduced to the idea that there will not be narrow silos. Um, so that's that's the, the main structural goal of the of the technical training. We can go to the next slide. An uh, example of uh, what we're going to cover: um, some some basic programming topics. Um, first couple of weeks, bring people uh, up to speed on uh, Python, Linux, uh, some of the packages that are important. Um, I think across the facilities like NumPy, SAPI. Um, this will be a review for some students. Uh, for some students, this will be new material. Uh, it'll be a new language anyway. It's not that they haven't been programming. Depending on uh, depending on computer science departments, uh, they may come in at you know excellent level Java and C plus plus programming, and in some departments, they may have never seen Python. Um, whereas on the other hand, uh, people that are coming from scientific disciplines, uh, they're probably going to be actually somewhat comfortable with it. Uh, another topic that we uh, are going to spend some time on is some of the fundamentals of what software engineering is. Uh, a lot of uh, software that gets um, developed uh, is put together well enough to get through a project. Uh, sometimes we call it grad student wear. It's, it gets developed, um, and then once the dissertation is signed off on, it sits and it doesn't get used again. It's All that work is not being leveraged, so we want to get people introduced to the idea of software engineering applied in the scientific domains. We want to give the students an opportunity uh, to be approached, uh, give, them, give them an opportunity to start thinking about things in terms of systems thinking. In uh, computer science, uh, we're guilty of in information science. We have a tendency to look at the world as a single threaded program, it runs, solves an interesting problem. We don't get a lot of opportunities to talk about how systems interoperate, how they interact with each other, workflows, um, queue management, things like that. We want to talk about, um, as we kind of get on into the semester, we will want to talk about some cloud computing topics uh, that are interesting um, in addition to just um, oh, you know, lift and shift, move your workload to the cloud. No, let's start thinking about how to uh, build cloud-like solutions rather than just moving computing. And then finally, we want to touch on uh, briefly uh, some machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence topics to uh, get them exposure to uh, some analytic techniques that are becoming more important very quickly. All right. So I'll let um, I'll let Angela talk about the, uh, the research training, the sophistication in that. I think so. Um, for the research training program, uh, this is really to help provide students, our students, an understanding of how the data the data life cycle works within major facilities. Um, in, in many cases, you know, maybe students have exposure to capture or processing or, you know, some form of, of storage, but they may not have the understanding or context um, that is needed to, to, to understand how this works within large scale scientific major facilities. And so we're really um, helping them understand that context through researching the data life cycles at specific NF, MFs. And then also engaging with the, the major facility guest speakers and also conducting um, their own research to look at, you know, how, how, what are the data life cycles at these major facilities. And then at the end of the, the year, they, we did this last year where they, um, that they provided a presentation at the end of the semester um, to CI Compass and, um, and MF representatives. And again, this is to really help them understand the importance of major facilities, the context of major facilities. In many ways, these students, excuse me, <clears throat> these students have not had exposure to this scale of cyber infrastructure. And so helping them understand that this, that this, this scale exists 
and this is the impact that um, that the the scientific impact that these major facilities have. It helps get them excited to understanding that there's other types of opportunities out there that are not necessarily um, industry opportunities, that there's this other potential, there's this other type of work that may, they may not have thought of or may not have had any exposure to um, at their universities and through their, through their, uh, through, through their undergraduate exposure um, with classes. And I think that next slide goes back to Eric. Yeah, so a little bit of the history. We uh, ran this class uh, last year, its first year. We had uh, students uh, from two of the universities that we have uh, project PIs, co-PIs at, um, ran a, a, a small section of it. It was, um, it was pretty successful. It uh, produced for instance, uh, 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 one really good uh, student poster. I mean, it's actually really good. Uh, that went off um, at one of the conferences. They got to uh, they got to present at the poster session. There went to the conference. Um, most of the students uh, reviewed it quite positively. They felt like it was actually a, a useful uh, use of uh, time and, and credit hours. Um, and we covered uh, some similar kinds of topics, but we're kind of revising uh, a little bit of what we're doing just, just based on uh, what we managed to learn the first year. I think you can go to the next slide. So exactly this year, we're going to, uh, of course, revise the curriculum, but we're also advertising more broadly. Uh, outside of just the schools that we have uh, the Compass PIs and Co-PIs at. Uh, we've sent this out uh, quite broadly. We've got a, a good selection of people that have applied. Um, and it's going to be more students this year. I'm not positive what the final number is, but it's, it's, a, it's a good size handful. And one thing um, that is important to you is that we are increasing uh, the degree of involvement um, with the major facilities. And, and we've talked to, uh, talked to some of you at, um, earlier about, yeah, this is, you know, this is kind of coming. It, it, it's firming up and, you know, we, we need some advice on what kinds of things you want to see. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. So as we're exposing students to research data life cycle, uh, scientific computing as sort of its own discipline. Um, we need um, to make this really successful. We're going to need to work closely uh, with, with you. Um, some of the, um, we need to figure out exactly who we need to be talking to. Um, we need, for one thing, we need your feedback um, on what you think is a good idea and a bad idea. And then once we get going, what's working well and what isn't. Um, we need uh, some people that are willing to, to work with the students over the summer. Uh, so the summer component is optional, but a great many of them are going to want to opt for that. Um, so we're going to uh, need to talk to you about things like what uh, kinds of suitable projects for undergrads do you have uh, that could be done? What are the things that would be nice to have that you've always kind of wanted, and it's useful, but you just, it's, it hadn't quite reached that point where you've got to do it. And yet it's a project that, you know, if it works, if an undergrad can get through it, great, but we're not betting the facility on it either. Okay, so think in terms of that kind of thing. Think what you would do if you had uh, the opportunity for a departmental senior design class uh, to look at some problem at your facility, that kind of, that kind of level. Um, it would be very nice, um, and a few people have already agreed, thank you, uh, to pop in and uh, do some some guest talks. Uh, I don't want to necessarily call it a guest lecture, and it does not have to be a whole class section. Um, wide, wide range of topics. We can make our curriculum work with what you want to talk about. Um, if we can, we will make this as painless for you as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, and then 
finally, uh, we are encouraging, I think we're actually requiring the students to produce um, a poster or similar project output. And um, if you can work with them um, as a co-author on it, um, you, you won't be the lead author, but it's an undergraduate poster. Uh, so it makes sense. Um, if you could help us, uh, if you could help the students with that, um, that would be uh, tremendously helpful. Okay, uh, and then I believe the last slide, reiterates the call for help. Um, let, us, let us know what we can do to make this successful for you and the students. Uh, so you can, um, th there's links there, um, and I believe they'll probably be in the chat or something. Um, so you can see some more information. See so if you, you, you got this website, you can take back somebody and say, see this, find a way to find a way to use this free undergraduate labor this summer. Um, and then we've got the, uh, the survey form in there. Uh, it will also be useful. And as promised, we uh, we're keeping it short so that once again, we can take your questions. We can be reactive to your needs.